I came back to Zambia to run the family business. And I diversified the business into minerals. So we wanted to control the place. The angry mob rose against us, laying me down and they started hitting me, saying, we want to break your legs. I passed out. The next minute, I'm waking up with cuffs on my hands. They were chanting that Mama Tisan has found himself in prison. And I married out of protest. My mom did not approve of this man. She served me with a divorce notice while I started. I used to go to church and I wouldn't know how to recite my Bible. The whole cell will have a Bible quiz. And I started dominating, I started shining. Each time, even now when I pray and fast, oh yeah, I become like Samson, I become so strong. <laughs> yes. It was Christmas time and we were driving back home, we crashed. And the police had no matist and crashed. Which one? The one who was in prison recent. Chloe, little did I know that the Barsha lady was spectating and she died in the Hi, welcome to Blooming, a podcast that's hosted by me and inspired by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that you could join us for this episode today. As you can see, if you're watching, we have a guest with us. Welcome, Panji. Thank you so much, Chloe. Welcome to our podcast. And the reason why I say our podcast is because this podcast is brought to you in partnership um, on the team. We have myself, Chloe, we have T, and we have Brother Benny. And of course, we have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as our not silent partner, but he is here with us. He's doing his thing. Holy Spirit is doing his thing. The Lord is also here doing his thing. So before we jump into the episode, I just want to remind you guys to like, to share, to subscribe, and to follow us on our different social media pages. Our handle is Blooming with Chloe. And I'm so glad that you guys have been watching. The reception for the podcast has been great. Um, you guys coming into my DMs has been amazing and it's just been a great journey thus far. And I am so grateful for every single one of you that watches, that listens, that subscribes, and that also shares the content with other people. So thank you so much. And yeah, let's get into today's episode. Angie, hi, how are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you doing, Chloe? I'm great. I'm so excited to have you. Yeah, I'm too excited. <laughs> right? Myself. I'm so excited because you called me up and you're like, Chloe, how does somebody get on the podcast? And a lot of people ask if they can come onto the podcast. And I'm like, no. But then you you reeled me in. You were yeah, like fishing yeah. and I like <laughs> I bit onto the hook and I was like, okay, Fanji needs to come onto the podcast. So Thank you so much for coming here to share your story on the platform. And I'm so certain that we're going to have an amazing conversation today. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so too. right, right. Yeah. yeah. So before we get into the main gist of the uh, conversation, I just wanted to ask about you. How was life for you when you were younger? Tell me about your upbringing, family life, family life that kind of stuff. Well, um, basically, I would say I had a normal uh, upbringing, mm -hmm. normal childhood, yeah. and um, I, I sort of lived in two different homes. Uh, one, I think, so I lost my biological dad um, when I was about uh, a, a young boy, I can't remember, 98. 98, that's when I lost my, my dad. Sorry and, to hear uh, that. Yeah, so my aunt, the young sister to my mother, had to adopt me. Mm -hmm. So when I moved in with them, I think I was in the fourth grade or fifth grade or something, I moved in with them and these guys were doing fine. Mm -hmm. My aunt was working for Zesco. My uncle, the husband, was working for Zesco. Yeah. And they were up in the management, they were bosses in Zesco. So I literally grew up with a good spoon in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And I moved in with the Silawis. Yeah. So if I had to remain with my mom, I think part of that time I was going to be uh, living in abject poverty. Okay. Because when we lost that, we literally lost everything. Yeah. I remember 98. There was still the issue of property grabbing. Oh, yeah. That yeah. thing is no longer there now. But we were victims of property grabbing back in the days. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when I moved in with uh, my adopted family, and things were good. Mm -hmm. I went to normal schools, um, ended up uh, living a good life. They, they, they had children of their own, but they treated me. 
like mm-hmm. I was just their own. Yeah. They, they, they took me to fancy places. I had same opportunities as their kids. So for me, I'd say I, I, I lived a normal life. Yeah. But um, when I was living um, with my adopted folks, they were not this kind of people that were persuaded to uh, push you to go to church. Yeah. So we, we sort of just woke up, lived, and everything was good. They would provide food for us, clothes, roof over our heads, and it was all good. Yeah. But we never lived a religious life. Um, I don't know why, but at, some, at a certain point, mm-hmm. we started, when we grew up, uh, I, I grew up with cousins, you know how it is, back then, we grew up with extended families. So I grew up with a cousin who was almost my age on my uncle's side. Mm-hmm. So we started being curious, we wanted to go to church. One time my cousin went to church and my uncle wasn't pleased with her. Really? Yeah. Why? I, I don't know. Yeah. He never actually mentioned to say, I don't want you to go to church, reason being A, B, C, D. Yeah. If we had known the reason why he didn't like us to go to church, we would have probably obeyed. But yeah. we still kept sneaking going to church. And how old were you when you were sneaking going to church? About maybe 13, 14, somewhere there. Yeah. How did you find church? Was it something you liked? Or? It was exciting, you know. I mean, every kid in the neighborhood was going to church. Sunday school was uh, something yeah. to talk about back then. Uh, we liked the teachings at Sunday school. Yeah. I, I never went to a Catholic church or anything. I went to like a Pentecost church where singing, praising the Lord is loud and everything. Yeah. So like when I was a kid, maybe I enjoyed the songs. I enjoyed the singing because basically uh, I like singing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. I'm, I mean, later in stage in life, I sang in my church praise team. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I, I grew up a normal life, normal family, a comfortable home. Mm-hmm. And until I went to college, uh, that's when I sort of started seeking to live with my biological parents. And that's just my mom. Oh, I see. So when I went to Nipah, uh, my mom then, that was around 2006, 2007, my mom um, sort of hit the jackpot. She, her, her life was doing well. Mm-hmm. She started running a business, a liquor distribution business yeah. uh, in Kawe. So now it is. Back then she couldn't afford to keep all the four kids because mm-hmm. I'm the second born out of the four kids. Yeah. That's, my brother is the first born, I'm the second, and I've got another brother that's after me and the last one is a girl. Yeah. Yeah, so now she could afford to, to take care, take of, care of us. Yeah. So she requested that I should come to help with the family business, which mm-hmm. was doing really, really fine. Okay. So I was one of the few um, uh, children that was focused in helping with my business. heart. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So she sort of tapped into me like she would want to leave me in charge of the show, even when there was an older brother. Yeah. So uh, she could see that I was more responsible because I knew at an early stage that this is our business, so I need to treasure it and to protect it. it um, so where were your, sorry to take you back, where were your siblings? It was only you and your aunt and uncle's house. Uh, in the other home, we, 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 I grew up with, um, they have three kids, three mm-hmm. girls. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, Willa, Monica, and Margaret. Yeah. So these guys are here in Osaka. Mm-hmm. I think uh, earlier when we were conversating, that's the place I was talking about in China. Oh, yeah. I see, okay. So these guys are big now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And when you started going to church, did you actually form a relationship with Jesus at that time, or were you just going to church like for the music that you liked and so on? Well, honestly, yeah. Uh, when I was going to church back then, I, and I moved from one church to the other because I was sort of curious. Yeah. I'd go to this church. Or church this one invites me to this church and i'll go there for maybe two sundays in the row yeah but my relationship with jesus was uh was kind of lukewarm mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. It was just uh, everybody's going to church now. Like, you also go to church yeah. as well. Okay. All right. So where did you live off when you are now helping your mom? Yeah. So you can continue from there. Yeah. Um, that was in Kawa now. Um, mm-hmm. I started helping my mom around 2009, mm-hmm. 2008. Even when I was at Nepal, the back and forth in holidays, I'd be at the shop. Yeah. And business was really, really good. And uh, this same business that she was in helped her take me to Australia for school. Okay. So I went to do my further studies in Australia for about six years. So I went to Perth. Um, and what did you study? I started Bachelor of Commerce, uh, wow. Management and Marketing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so while I was there, I was I was introduced to this girl, a Ghanaian girl, mm-hmm. who went to um, a Pentecost church. Yeah. So I started going there. You know, it's hard when you're abroad to look for an African church, yeah. an African typical church. Yeah. So. I found one and it was a West African dominant, yeah, you know, yeah. like half of the people there were from West Africa. Yeah. But still, church is church, African church is church. So I felt at home. I felt good because they would sing all those famous Nigerian praise songs yeah. and everything. Yeah. So while I was there, I used to go to that church. And then, now, because I was older enough to probably seek Jesus in my life. Mm-hmm. So I started having that uh, relationship, like a one-on-one relationship with God. I started praying, because you know how it is when you're in school and doing exams. Yeah, yes. I'll, I'll pray about... <laughs> suddenly remember Jesus. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I'll pray about my exams. I'll yeah. probably pray and fast. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I started having... That's where I started singing in the praise. I see, okay. Yeah, so I was singing the praise at the same church. That's where I started singing from. Mm-hmm. But I, I've always sung from when I was a kid. Yeah. So there I took it seriously. And yeah, I, I did sing from different places. I went to Adelaide, um, Sydney, mm-hmm. for the same church thing. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, and mainly the same woman was my partner at that time. Mm-hmm. Like her family was really church people okay yeah so each time the mother lived in sydney and we lived in perth and each time i'll be speaking to the mother and she would just all up in my business trying to encourage encourage me uh, to go to church yeah. to, to pray and yeah. to remember uh, jesus all the time and everything even when we when we would argue she would come in and just cool the tempers down and remember why jesus is in our lives yeah, yeah so you know how it is, abroad. I was abroad and I was living a life where I see my friends that I went with uh, at the same time mm-hmm. dating multiple women, like changing girls. I mean, you're African, you want to explore, you, you want to date a Muzungu, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for me, yeah. um, honestly, I was shocked that I. I dated one woman the whole time. Oh, there. really? That's yeah, nice. So That's cool. I, I really maybe focused on other things than uh, what my friends would. I had Zimbabwean friends mm-hmm. uh, that were with good looking chicks. Yeah. And, Zimbabwe. Yeah. <laughs> so, nonetheless, yeah, that's how my <laughs> life was in Australia. Then, yeah. after six years, I got back uh, to Just Zambia yeah. and. It was a good run in Australia. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do you think you were faithful to one woman because you were going to church, you were singing in the choir, or is that just the kind of person you are? Ideally, uh, while I was there, I think I was faithful because I, I was so close to God. Okay. Yeah, I, I knew uh, the importance of being faithful to one woman. Uh, even when I had temptations, mm-hmm. mainly the women would come to me. Yeah. Yeah, because... I don't know why, but uh, I just never entertained um, that kind of life. You know? yeah. And on the other side, uh, it's because my upbringing. Yeah. And I was never raised in an environment where I see my uncle and auntie no, fighting exactly. or my uncle cheating or having heard that he's seen another woman. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a very comfortable home. Like I, I, I saw how my uncle 
embraced my my aunt. Yeah. Like, he really really loved her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And by the way, my aunt is late. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Up to now, my pops is still. Are you serious? Yeah. That is so rare for. <laughs> And I remember again. his month, his his his, his uh, what it was, his tribute uh, mm-hmm. at my aunt's funeral. He said, "I would throw my manifesto at you in my next life." Aww. You know that yeah. that really touched me. Yeah. So this is a man that was faithful even when the wife was in the grave. Yeah. So I never was raised in that kind of environment. Even my father, when we were kids, I was raised in a, in a good home, in a good environment. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I feel like people underrate the importance of just having like a great role model in the house, like a man who is faithful, who's yeah. home on time, who's around, who's involved with the kids. So it's pretty cool to hear that. I, I, yeah. I want to say that's the first time <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Honestly. Uh, I've never, I never experienced that. Is so anything. amazing, yeah. So, how would you handle the temptations when, like, the girls would come to you? Would you do a Joseph? Would you be like, I'm leaving my coat, I'm fleeing? <laughs> No, honestly, no. Um, having, uh, I think there was a point where I thought maybe I should just live my life. I mean, I'm a bro. For that. Yeah, yeah. So, what could go wrong? And between me and you, my mom sponsored me to Australia, like really? single hand. Oh, wow. That's amazing. While I was there, she even told me, don't work. Uh, I didn't send you there for work. Yeah. I'll, I'll provide. She provided for everything, but you know how it is. I'm a man. Yeah. I needed the, the finer things. Mm-hmm. So I started doing uh, these jobs here and there. I had three jobs between me and my school. Wow. And I, I, I came out good. I, I managed good, good grades. Yeah. yeah. So I, I had temptations here and there because Australia is a big country. And I was at one of the best uni, uni Skirt mm-hmm. University, and mm-hmm. you you meet people from different cultures and backgrounds. Yeah. So yeah, the temptation was, was there. Okay, yeah. well, I'm glad, and I'm so happy to hear that a young man went through school and was not doing the most. That's <laughs> very inspirational to me. Yeah, I never pierced my ears. I never yeah. tattooed my body. I never. Did you do drugs? Alcohol? I never did drugs, uh, but alcohol, yes. Yeah. I'll take a beer or two. Yeah. I would go out with my friends. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I would do barbecues at a friend's house. Mm-hmm. Maybe visit a house party from time. Yeah. There were so many house parties. Yeah. 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 But it wasn't like extreme, extreme. No, 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 no. Okay. But I had friends that would do drugs, like uh, maybe do weed or mm-hmm. something. Yeah. So you've never done weed before? No, never. Never smoked in my life before. Okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. you're like a, a golden egg. <laughs> Not really. I, I mean, well, you know, I was, because my mom kept imparting this uh, idea in my mind that you are abroad and that's not your home. Yeah. Can you believe I had opportunities to go to the beach, but then I would be on the terraces watching the beach with my binoculars. She told me, don't go to the water because the waves, once they sweep you, because I can't swim to save my life. So I'll be there and remembering my mom shouting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, then the other thing was, when I was out there, I knew what my mom was going through, what she was sacrificing, what she was giving up for me to enjoy that kind of life yeah. abroad, you know? Yeah. Trust me, I never, I had friends that would come borrow money from me. Now borrow the money. I had friends from Zim that would borrow food from me, mm-hmm. you know, and honestly speaking, I never stepped out of my house to borrow any. Yeah. I paid my rent on mm-hmm. time. I lived in a proper accommodation. When I just arrived in Australia, I was living in student accommodation, but eventually I moved out and started renting my own place. And I moved into an unfurnished house and I furnished myself. Okay. Yeah, so honestly speaking, I had I lived a comfortable life. Okay, cool. Yeah. So you came back to Zambia, you started working as you? Yeah, well, I started working for the family business. Because oh, even when I came, that's the more reason I came. I didn't want to come. Mm-hmm. I actually went into a huge fight with my mom about coming back. Yeah. Why? Why didn't you want to come back? Uh, there were more opportunities for me there. Because you know how it is when you're abroad, it's graduation time. 
companies like BHP, Billington, Rio Tinto, these mining giants, mm -hmm. they would come to poach people on the graduation. I was one of the best students. I was likely to be poached by a company. Yeah. I was approached at it. Mm -hmm. But then what happened? My mom kept insisting, you need to come back and run the family. Mm -hmm. It's like, how did you think I was going to end up? Did you send me abroad so that I end up back in Zambia? Yeah, yeah. So I sent you abroad for export. Mm -hmm. I don't care where you end up, but this is your home. And this business needs a set of hands that's more responsible than what we have now. Yeah. So, yeah, so I came back to Zambia to run the family business. I, 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 I worked with my mom from the time I got back up to summer 20, 2017. Mm -hmm. Actually, 2017, she sort of retired from the business. and You took over. I took over. That's when the event started. Yeah, tell us about the event because I'm so. You know, curious. when I got back, yeah, I think I threw everything, all the norms and every religious things I knew and took, mm -hmm. I threw them out of the window when I Why? got back from. It. I don't know. Maybe peer pressure. I had friends uh, in Z that I left back when I went to Ozi, and I wanted maybe to impress them. Oh, I see. So then in their mind, our mate has come back from abroad. Mm -hmm. And in their mind, I came with a ton of money. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So when I got back, I started clubbing, like heavily. Started going to the club and that's when I ended up with my first wife. Mm -hmm. I was young. I ended up with her, not... We didn't dead for long mm -hmm. because I was having money. Mm -hmm. Like my mom was was quite wealthy. Mm -hmm. She had so much money, and I think if we were not careful, we were going to end up junkies. But then um, I married this particular woman yeah. because I could afford it, not because I was ready. Mm -hmm. I was not ready for anything, and I married out of protest. My mom did not approve of this marriage. Why didn't she approve? Do you know um, why? Well, maybe with the kind of woman that I ended up with. Mm -hmm. You know, I live in a small town where people know what happened in that yard, what happened in that yard. Car was so small that people know every gossip that's happening in that family. Yeah. And my family being one of those uh, what-to-do families, yeah. they probably, all the eyes and ears were on us. So mm -hmm. they would they definitely know what's going on. Yeah. So when they started seeing me with that woman, mm -hmm. they, I don't know who told my mother, she was a bad woman. In a nutshell, this woman was not welcome in my mom's home. Mm -hmm. uh, mom said, I've heard so much about this woman. But was it true? Was what she was hearing true? <sighs> well, I don't know. You know, for me, I was in love with this woman. Yeah. Uh, my mom approached me, are you sure this love is a woman? Sweet that... though. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure this is a woman that you want to end up with because I've heard so much about, uh, her. about her? And yeah. they're not, the stories are not pleasing. Yeah. And most of the sources that my mom was hearing these things from were her, her friends. Yeah. My mom's friends. Yeah. So they were like, Are you sure uh, that woman would lie to me? Are you sure that woman would lie to I me? See, I see. So, I see. in as much as mom didn't encounter a uh, one on one with my, my ex wife to know about anything about her, she just judged her from the so what people were saying, yeah. So fast forward, uh, when I think the clubbing was too much, and I don't know what was going on when the mom left the shop for me. Mm -hmm. I was I was handling things, then I diversified the business into um, minerals. Like I started doing mining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's there's an old zinc plant there in Kabwe. Mm -hmm. It's like a black mountain for, for people Kabe. that live in Kabwe. So. Yeah. I engaged myself in that and we started doing well. We were making quite good money. Mm -hmm. But then we were quite irresponsible. Yeah. I'll come here. I started being unfaithful to my ex wife. After you went through school, now all of the same. You were... I mean, like I said, maybe oh. I was overwhelmed with peer pressure, yeah. the money, yeah. being in charge. Yeah. And money is the root of all evil. You know, so I was back in Z and yeah. I needed to show these guys that I was the exposed one. Yeah. I used to keep quite a number of friends that I invested my time and money in that 
really never invested back in me. Yeah. So um, we started doing that business back and forth. It was good. Then suddenly there were people, you know how it is when you're at the mine site. Mm -hmm. It's a savage plant. Mm -hmm. You find all sorts of characters, mm -hmm. you know, drug dealers or whatever. So we were like the finances to the small, small boys that would round up. We were the likes of Spark Mining in Chingola mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. all these people we hear of at the Black Mountain in Kiki. Yeah. So we wanted to control the place. Yeah. So we started giving out money to those people to just mobilize the material for us and we'll, we'll get them off and we'll sort they will sell to the buyers here in Yeah. So one guy we gave him money, he started tripping. Mm -hmm. He said that all the time we go there, my brother was involved, my older brother. He would go there, it was about sixty thousand. Yeah. We gave this guy, he was like no, uh, I'm not ready. So he started threatening my brother because he was also like a mm -hmm. commander, so to say. So me, I said, no, no, he can't threaten you. I I mobilized a clique of my guys. I used to have a lot of guys, violent people. Mm -hmm. They followed me because of the money. So we, we went there. We tried to like reason with him. Mm -hmm. And our intention was, if he doesn't reason with us, we're definitely going to rough him up. That was our intention. So when we got there, so the plant is like all the way up here, down there's a dam. Mm -hmm. So when we were coming up here, then they were at the downstream. Yeah. So he saw that the guys are coming to rough me up, dived in the water. Oh, and you can swim, so you can. Yeah. <laughs> so the guy vanishes. Yeah. The, the time we were getting into the mine, people were chanting, yes, yes, yes. Come and rough him up. This guy, he used to beat people up. Even old ladies up there oh, used to wow. work there. Yes. Yeah. For them, it was like, oh, the saviors are here. They're going to rough him up. Mm. Once that guy vanished on the water and they assumed that he had died, mm -hmm. they said, we caused it. He died because of us. Mm -hmm. He started, the angry mob now rose against us. Really? We were just the seven of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was terrible. Mm -hmm. Imagine 300 people rising against seven people. Yeah. And Chloe, there was no two ways about it. Everybody was coming from all these directions. Mm -hmm. And they did all sorts of bad things to us. They were hitting us with shovels, picks and pangas, whatever. I had cuts all over my, my head, my, my legs. They actually literally lay me down and they started hitting me saying, we want to break your legs. People that used to work for me, yeah. they <laughs> turned against me. People you who were just cheering you yeah. on. Had, yeah. Then I tried to escape and rushed to my car. Mm -hmm. I found that they were breaking down my car. They wanted to set it ablaze. Mm -hmm. So uh, I tried to call for help. People were just spectating and taking pictures and videos. Some would say, ah, this is the son to that woman. This is the son. And some ladies that knew me, they were pleading on my behalf to let me go and the, the, that kind of thing. I was all over bleeding. Yeah. Some of the guys escaped, just the two of us, me and one of my inch guy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one who used to have my back. He was with me and they got us now. They wanted to go and throw us on that dam mm -hmm. because for them it was revenge. Yeah. So that, I think... The police swept in at the right time because yeah. they were trying. They were counting one, wow. two. Then the police, the police showed, up. showed up and they fired some tear gas in the air, and they were just brutal. They just arrived at the right time, right place. Yeah. Then they let me go. They just threw me down. They threw my my guy down, and they scampered in all directions and were mm -hmm. picked in the Land Cruisers, and not knowing that one my brothers was there. He's the one who escaped and rushed to the police. Oh, and that's how the police actually yeah, came. Yeah, he alerted the police to say, hey, yeah. people are going to kill each other. So yeah. We're talking to the police, at the police were bleeding. There was blood in the yeah. van. And my young brother was there. You know how it is. Everybody was there. So they rushed us to the uh, Cabo Central Hospital. Mm -hmm. And the nurse was like, do you want to call somebody that... You want to know that you're here? I said, yeah, I want to call my mom. Yeah. Do you remember her number? I said, yeah, I called her number and I 
talked to her. Mom was like, I'm actually on the way. Mm-hmm. We've heard what has happened. Yeah. So I was there, then they jabbed us. I, I passed out. The next minute I'm waking up, they've done stitches on me yeah. with cuffs on my hands. With cuffs? Yeah. With a police officer yeah. waiting on our bedside. Mm-hmm. Then my mom tried to ask, why, why is he in cuffs? In handcuffs, yeah. So I said, uh, no, um, apparently there was a case of murder. Mm-hmm. These guys are believed to have pushed one of the guys they were fighting with on the water. Mm-hmm. And they got a stone and stoned him in the head. And that's how he uh, drowned. Yeah. So like, what? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So fast forward, people kind of started coming to to the hospital, mm-hmm. in and out, because I was well known, like people from Kitwe, yeah. people from where. Yeah. I had big guys coming in the hospital saying, why is he in cuffs? Yeah. So the, the, the nurse on duty was like, Esh, these guys, they were referring to us as Jeroboos. Oh, wow. These guys are Jeroboos. We need to alert the uh, officer in charge. I think they need to mobilize more to beef up the security here. Yeah. Because I don't think these guys are going to to sleep in here, they might just escape. Mm-hmm. The doctor came, he discharged us the following morning. Mm-hmm. So, Wallace, we had not healed, mm-hmm. we were taken to the police cells. Mm-hmm. Uh, police, uh, a non police uh, called the uh, Cassandra Police. Cassandra Police. Yeah. Okay. So, we, we, we were there and were told, you no, know, because of security, people were coming in and out of the world, so we, we couldn't keep you there, so you're going to be kept here. Mm-hmm. Yes, man. I hadn't seen lice in my life since 1994 mm-hmm. when we were kids, and I found it at the police cells. So when you arrived at the the cells, was it like, oh, these guys are criminals, put them in a cell, or like, did they put you... No, we were in the same cells as just the Takataka guys. Mm-hmm. They, maybe the, the guy, they caught Shishita in the night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we were put in one cell. Mm-hmm. A, a whole big cell, but there were a lot of us. Mm-hmm. So there was lice biting, mm-hmm. and we were sleeping on the floor. The first day we slept on the floor. Mm-hmm. Second day when they, you know how it is in Zambia, corruption and these things. Mm-hmm. When they knew that these boys were the sons to this woman, they brought a um, uh, comfortable mattress for us. Mm-hmm. But we, we then instructed the, 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 the police on duty to say, Hey man, we need you to get these blankets and probably burn them. Yeah, because the they were, yeah. yeah. So we tried to make the environment suit us. Mm-hmm. So we were just hoping that we were going to be there for two, three, three days. Because mm-hmm. what they had told us was since it's a murder case, there's no bail. Yeah. Then that guy, he's drunk. So the only thing that's going to exonerate you guys is if. He's up on the water after three days or, two, or four. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a postmortem. Yeah, to determine the cause yeah, of and death. Yeah, and determine the cause of death. Yeah. So, like, oh, cool. We were so calm about it because we knew that we didn't touch it. Yeah. So, three days, four days, up to 23 days, mm-hmm. we're still in the cells waiting for instructions from the DPP. Yeah. So, we're like, hey, officer, what's going on? We've been here too long. Mm-hmm. So my mom started making noise, like, why is my son taking so long? Where is the justice in this? Wait, can I ask, like, in Zambian prisons, is it like you're just in a cell, all of you? And that's... This the- is currently, Chloe, this is currently on the police cells, mm-hmm. not Not the prison. prison. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So this was 23 oh, days okay. in police, like in, in custody. Okay. okay. So people are saying, there's no justice here. This guy has been over mm-hmm. Can you... Transfer him or can you charge him? Mm-hmm. That's when the, the officer in charge started panicking. Then, kaboom. A, a lot of people approached my mother for money. Yeah. Like they enticed her to do a favor, say, ah, we're going to get him off just by the police cells. He's not going to go to prison. Yeah. Give us 10,000, give us 20 yeah. pin. Which guys are these? Like they knew the police? The they... police, the commission of police. Okay. The, 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 the court CIOs. Uh, okay. They are those big, big guys. There were also con men, like I'm a lawyer, mm-hmm, a big lawyer, yeah. what, what. They knew that my mom was having money, mm-hmm. but my mom was guided by God mm-hmm. to not, because also about my mom, mm-hmm. she never used to be that believer 
back then. Yeah. So before, right up before she retired, she 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 got saved. Like she started serving the Lord with all her heart, and she just went all in. Mm-hmm. She said, "I want to serve the Lord." Yeah. So when people were approaching her, they didn't know that what they were fighting against. Mm-hmm. She said, "I'm not gonna do anything. Yeah. My son is innocent. I'm not going to do anything mm-hmm. at this moment." It's the faith, you know. God. Yeah, yeah, you know. She back then. My mom was going to remove a huge amount of money just to, yeah. And again, my mom's principle. She always told told us that I've got three boys. Mm-hmm. If you are found in a situation where in the police cells and it's not just fire, I'm not gonna come there. But for me, she knew because I had done. I had told her what I was doing. Yeah. As business, mm-hmm. she saw the money that I used to bring in. Yeah. So she knew I was on duty, I was at work. Mm-hmm. But people were probably jealous and they wanted to sabotage my work. Exactly, yeah. You know? yeah. So she came, but mm-hmm. in another event, you've just fought at the club and she over a girl, yeah. she wasn't going to show her face either. Because uh, all, her, all our lives in Kawe, whenever you're at the police cells, they want to rip because it's uh, what my mom is commonly known as Mama T. But those are Mama T's kids, yeah. you know. Yeah. Those are Mama T's kids. She was popular like that. Mm-hmm. So they thought each time you're in trouble, they'll get money. Exactly. Yeah. So this time she never even obeyed to anybody saying, "No, we're going to get your son off the hook." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Yeah. So after twenty three days, the twenty third day, I think that was twelfth December. We, I was born on the twenty third November. Mm-hmm. I spent my Your time birthday in prison. In prison. My my birthday I had it in cells. Yeah. And they still brought presents. Oh. I had tears on, on my birthday <laughs> in cells. So yeah. this is the thing. Uh mom started pushing and on the twenty third day and the also in church says, Panji, your mom is coming. In, ca- in fact I'm calling your mom mm-hmm. to come and pick you guys at the court so magistrate court. Mm-hmm. So we're like, oh, we're going to the subordinate court. Okay, what's there? Mm-hmm. You know, we they want to write something that's going to protect you while you're out there, mm-hmm. uh, so that people don't pick on you to say, oh, you murdered somebody mm-hmm. or the relative to that person will yeah. come. Yeah, yeah, how I get you. Okay, uh, the car came. We jumped in it. We went to the court, and then my mom was called to come and pick us right after everything is done. So we were told. To go in one of the magistrate chambers, mm-hmm. and in there there was a uh, resident magistrate, uh, Matip. Mm-hmm. He read the rights. I don't want to get us. in trouble saying all these names. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, we 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 went in there and mm-hmm. they read our rights, whatever, whatever. Then standard procedure. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, mm-hmm. Cool. So what are we doing here? My mom asked. So what's next? So oh, no, we haven't received instructions for. From DPP, mm-hmm. NPA is still working on your instructions, so you have to go to Mukolo Commonwealth Prison. You are going to be remanded there until further yeah. instructions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My co-accused almost collapsed. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that my call accused was once in prison oh. here in Chimbokai. So you started having flashbacks. Yeah, flashbacks, yeah, and he just said no. no why? Why are we going there? Yeah. So for me, I was in sort of shock. Yes. And again, I don't know what was guiding me because I knew I was innocent. Yeah. Is this for real? Yeah. At one point, I found myself smiling because I didn't think it was true. Yeah. So the, my mom started crying right then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why, Mukobeko? No, it's going to be fine. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to be a short time. The maximum prison is going to be fine. We were shipped to... After the whole court sessions finished, we were taken to to Mukwege Commission Prison yeah. on the twelfth of December, twenty seventeen. Yeah, and it's a big prison. Mm-hmm. And we arrived there. We we were not prepared to go to, to prison. prison yeah. I was in my uh, singlet and shorts. Mm-hmm. When I arrived there, the first person that was opening opening the prison door, yeah. like it's a huge door, but yeah, it's a, somebody that I know from out there. And like they it. saw me and they were shocked. It yeah. was a female officer. Oh, okay. Like I helped her one time mm-hmm. before she joined the, the whole prison thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
she almost collapsed when she saw me because yeah. she didn't believe that yeah. I was there. Yeah. So we're talking to ourselves. I was in cell two. Mm-hmm. So what you just get there is there because you know in the movies like when you get to prison, you whole... you go through process. They process yeah. you. So what's the process like? Uh, well, the standard because mm-hmm. obviously they will have to um get your fingerprints, mm-hmm. blah blah blah. And I understand when we arrived, that's when they started taking images mm-hmm. because back then they never even had the technology yeah. to yeah. take images. Oh, so and like... when they when one prisoner escaped at one point, mm-hmm. that's when they realized we need to start taking Again, images. Yeah. So they took our images, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Then uh, they, they, they let someone escort us, the officer escort Wait, us. Like in the movies, they like do the like strip search, like they strip and they like... No, You bend no, over, you cough. No. Uh, no, there was no strip searching. Okay. It was just like fix, fixing us and mm-hmm, checking mm-hmm. if we have any substances or whatever. Yeah. There is no testing for for drugs yeah. or anything but i remember we went through the clinic mm-hmm. to just test us like mm-hmm. but at this for, point had your wounds healed were you fine? yes okay we, for me that healed pretty good mm-hmm. and my call accused was he was beaten pretty bad mm-hmm. but some of it uh, healed um then as we got there we, we healed completely okay so we went to the clinic they did the full body count and everything mm-hmm. blood count mm-hmm. we checked out then we were processed to the police cell, to the prison cell. Mm-hmm. Now you see, to my surprise, yeah, there's a football pitch, mm-hmm. and these guys are playing soccer. Yeah, I'm like what? Mm-hmm. They're playing soccer. Okay, we passed along the the football pitch. Mm-hmm. There was just a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I have never seen a lot of people. even. I was in boarding school. Mm-hmm. I graduated from Chizonga Technical. Yeah, where a lot of us and it was a boys school. Mm-hmm. This was a big boys' school, mm-hmm. you know, like a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. So there were, and at the moment we arrived, the cells were looking so tall, yeah. and the wall was looking so so tall. Yeah. And I looked like a midget. Mm-hmm. So we, they were chanting, you know. Yeah. For me, they were chanting that Mama Tisan has found themselves in prison, but they didn't know which one of us. Hi you guys, Chloe here. Just wanted to let you guys know that the second part of this episode will drop next week Sunday. Be sure to tune in again so that we can finish off Panty's amazing and incredible testimony. Are you guys bang? Because I'm bang. <laughs>